The second time this year, Senate Republicans prevented the Freedom to Vote Act from moving forward after Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said his party would oppose it. The bill included provisions like allowing automatic and same-day voter registration, no excuse mail voting, and would make Election Day a holiday. Well, why the all of these things, Mika, would seem to get more people involved in American yeah. democracy. So that sounds like a good thing. So how many Republicans voted for this? Huh, let's see. I'll try and count them. Oh, wait, um, the nine. bill fell short. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of 60 votes needed to advance all Democrats to back the measure, but Majority Leader Chuck Schumer later voted no in order to request another vote down the line. After yesterday's vote, Schumer spoke from the Senate floor. Every single Republican senator just blocked this chamber from having a debate, simply a debate, on protecting Americans' right to vote in free and fair elections. A little over a year ago, our country held the safest, most accessible, most on-the-level elections in modern history. Republican obstruction is not a cause for throwing in the towel. As soon as next week, I'm prepared to bring the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act here to the floor. What we saw from Republicans today is not how the Senate is supposed to work. The measure was initially scaled back by Democrats last month to win the backing of centrist Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. But those efforts, Joe, failed to sway any Republican support yesterday. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean? And, and, and explain the position Joe Manchin is in right now. Well, first of all, what does it mean? It means the Republicans are, have taken obstruction to a new level. You talk about do nothing Republicans. Think about this. It wasn't enough that not a single Republican would vote uh, to, to protect voting rights for all Americans, to get more Americans involved in American democracy. They blocked the vote. They stood in, in a sort of a, a schoolhouse door situation. They were like George Wallace. They stood in the doorway and stopped people from being able to go in and vote to expand voting rights for all Americans. This would help all Americans. This would help white Americans, black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, you name it. This would help everybody vote. And when you have the United States having lower voting turnout than most Western democracies, this is a good thing. This is the sort of thing that when it passes, and it will pass, you're going to have people looking back 10, 15 years and looking at this way, wait, 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 why didn't America do this before? It'd be like seatbelts and airbags and all these things that you had Republicans and industry leaders fighting before that are now commonplace. And you were like, wait, this makes too much sense. And it's the same thing with making Election Day a holiday, having, having early voting uh, consistent across the country. It makes too much sense. But this is a do-nothing Republican Congress that, again, just does more than uh, not vote for expanded voting rights. They stand in the schoolhouse door and block anybody from voting. It's just like we were talking about a week or two ago. It wasn't enough for Republicans to say we must raise the debt ceiling and it would be irresponsible not to raise the debt ceiling. Then they decided to not vote to raise the debt ceiling. It wasn't enough that Republicans were against voting for raising the debt ceiling. They stood in the schoolhouse door and blocked anybody from going in the chambers and voting to raise the debt ceiling. A gift, perhaps one of the great gifts to China in a very long time, to communist China, giving communist China an advantage over us and saying, look, they, they can't even come to an agreement to pay off their debts. And here we have it again, Rev. Here we have a Republican party. And I must say, as a former Republican, I, I'm not offended. I just, I'm really... I, I'm, I'm amused when people are stupid enough to say, oh, the Republican Party's always been the same. It's the same party. If you, you know, if you look what Donald Trump's doing now, oh, that's Joe, that's what you were. No, no, it wasn't. You know, you look at George W. Bush, a president who's been vilified by the left for a long time. Here's a guy that, by the way, saved 13, 14 million lives in Africa with PEPFOR, uh, 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 helping uh, push back the AIDS and Africa crisis. Here's a guy after 9-11 that went to a mosque and said, these are Americans. We're not vilifying Muslim Americans because what somebody did overseas. 
That was Republican. And it was a Republican Party that voted unanimously, Reverend Al, to extend voting rights. Now, here we are in the age of Trump, and there's not a single Republican who will vote for it. Not only that, they're standing in the schoolhouse door to stop anybody from going in to vote, to let them vote their conscience, to vote for voting rights. You know, when 2006, which we showed this morning, when George Bush signed the uh, Voting Rights Act extension, I was in the White House lawn as a guest of George Bush, who was a vociferous critic of George Bush. Oh, yeah. But everyone united around voting rights. Civil rights leaders, we were there with him for that because voting rights is it's something everyone wanted. It's sacrosanct. It, it used to be sacrosanct That's before exactly the right. Trump Republican Party. What is so egregious about what happened yesterday is that Senator Manchin met with some of us, met with Martin Luther King III and I, and said, I will come with a bill that will be bipartisan. I can come with a compromise. He sat with seven other senators and crafted this freedom to vote bill. Which we can I just say for middle America, for, for, for me, for people who are, are conservative slash moderate, <clears throat> it's a really good bill. There was stuff in the first bill in HR1 as drafted that I said way too extreme. Way too, it's nationalizing uh, elections way too much. There are things in here that make me really uncomfortable. This mansion comes in and he puts together a bill that really is a compromise uh, solution to voting rights. So he does this. And he asked us for time. He right. said, let me give a bill. Many of us, including me, supported Senate Bill 1, but people felt it was extreme. He said, give me time. We said, fine. Yesterday, not one senator on the Republican side, not one, no, not a one, voted even to go forward to debate. It wasn't even the bill. It's that we won't let you even debate the bill, as you say, standing in the schoolhouse uh, door to block even the discussion. People to walk around in it. and debate it. They're blocking the debate. Exactly. They're blocking the vote. They're blocking. Richard, what does this say about? the Republican Party, uh, our, our, our former party, where they won't even allow a debate on a debt ceiling, they won't allow debate uh, on voting rights, they won't allow debate on any of these bills. Look, the debt ceiling is just pure cynicism since they had already voted for all the spending. What worries me about this, technically these people could be Republican voters, not technically, in reality. I remember, you know, I'm old enough to remember when Republicans actually were engaging in the battle of ideas. You put out better proposals, people come out and, and, and vote for Republicans. That's the marketplace of, of, of politics. The idea that Republicans are now are trying to limit the right to vote, essentially, it's almost as if they've given up the competition of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. They basically say, we can't win if we have a level playing field. So as a result, we are going to tilt the playing field and make it harder for people to vote. That is a really sad statement. And the fact that Rob Portman, Mitt Romney, people who know better are supporting this is, to me, a really sad statement about modern Republicans. And, and Willie, let's always remember those names, people that will come out at some point and, and, and play a moderating uh, voice. Oh, I'm a moderate, whether it's Mitt or, or any of these other people that, again, have said we're going to help communist China by letting America default on the debt, by not just not voting to raise the debt ceiling, but stopping people standing at the schoolhouse door, stopping people from going into debate and vote to raise the debt ceiling. Let, let's make no mistake who they are and what they're doing now and what they just did on voting rights and what they're going to do next week on the John Lewis voting rights bill. And the names you just listed include Lisa Murkowski and a bunch of others, theoretically are the persuadable, the moderate Republican votes to get Democrats to 60 votes on some legislation. But Jonathan Lemire, Republicans couldn't make more clear that they're not going to lend a single vote to this effort to reform, reform voting rights, not just on this larger package, but as Joe said, next week on the Joe, John Lewis bill. So what kind of pressure does that put on Joe Biden now? He has said, we don't want to change the filibuster. That's there for a reason. It sets a bad precedent. Joe Manchin obviously said, I don't want to get rid of the filibuster. But we're hearing from civil rights groups, from voting <laughs> rights groups, from Democrats, that the only way we're going to get this through, and maybe it's a carve out just for this legislation, is to scrap the filibuster, get 50 votes, and pass this through. Do you think Joe Biden's mind has changed at all on that question? 
Well, certainly, Willie, the GOP, they are in lockstep on this, that, that Minority Leader McConnell has made clear there will be no votes. There occasionally you're allowed yeah. to vote your conscience there. No dissension on this one. But you're right. The pressure has really grown <laughs> on Democrats and Joe Biden in particular. He, yesterday, he put out a statement condemning this measure, the fact that it didn't even get to a vote. But nowhere in that statement was anything about doing a carve out with the filibuster. That, that That's still a bridge he does not want to cross. And we know that there are some in his party who join him, Manchin publicly, others privately. But we've heard from groups who say that this is not enough. This should be the central focus of your presidency. And the White House to this point has been, di has been disciplined and they want to stay on the infrastructure and reconciliation packages. And we've heard from Biden telling Democrats that we'll have to out-organize Republicans next year in the midterms which is not a good enough answer. And I want to ask you, Reverend Sharpton, you've been in these conversations. You've been in these groups. Should uh, Joe Biden be doing more? I think that we are at the point where you have to deal with the carve out of the filibuster. We've been saying that for months. I think when you see Senator King, mm -hmm. who is an independent, who's been very much for keeping the filibuster, saying maybe we now need to look at a carve out. I think the pressure is on now for everyone to come back to the table, including the president, when not one Republican <laughs> would allow even the debate. I think that this, the ones that have put the pressure on them is not the civil rights leaders, not the Democrats, but the Republicans, because they're saying that we're not even going to debate it. We're not going to give you a choice. And I think that the White House, I like uh, Vice President Harris came out saying we won't give up. We're coming out swinging and, and she's going to be dealing with the civil rights community on this. I think <clears> that <throat> the Republicans have put their back to the wall, not just those of us that have been calling. Oh, I, I agree. I think the Republicans have their back against the wall. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.